morning. Let's say a little short prayer and then get after it here, okay? Dear Father, thank you absolutely so much for this day. We not only honor our four veterans, one of whom I've known for a long time, but we honor you on this day and celebrate this week for the next Sunday. Be with us as we uh, venture through this um, pathway that you've set for us. In your name we pray, amen. Your announcements for this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. We want to welcome all of you. We are so thankful today to have the special service planned to honor more veterans and our Palm Sunday service. We'd like to invite you to come for our Easter service uh, Sunday, next week Sunday. Uh, we'll have sunrise service out on the front lawn of the church. Please bring your own lawn chair and blankets. Fire pits and heaters will be running to help keep everyone warm. Between services, you are invited in the parlor for donuts, juice, and coffee being provided by our prayer and worship team. And following the fellowship time at 9.30, please remember to join us in the sanctuary for a very special time of worship, celebration, and communion. Um, it was decided at the last session meeting that we will start making masks optional once you're seated in the sanctuary. If you choose to remove your mask, this is, this is uh, up to you, whatever you'd like to do. The focus for Dove Collections in April is notebooks and journals calendars for adults to keep track of appointments. Thanks to many here, Diane was able to deliver many supplies and coloring and activity books for the children in March. Please consider paying your covenant commitment for 2021. The cost is $55 per member. This money is used by our presbytery and soon there will be a moment for mission explaining what it helps support. Prayer and worship committee will meet following worship today. Are there any other announcements that anyone has? If not, Kathy Totley will join us now with a moment for mission. Yes. I don't think I did. 7.30, the, the sunrise service next Sunday will begin at 7.30. Thanks, thanks Pat. Just a little reminder about uh, the One Great Hour of Sharing. This um, One Great Hour of Sharing has been going on for, uh, since, I think, since World War II. And it helps provide um, help for the hungry, for disaster, and for development. And uh, all of these are such worthy, worthy, worthy things. And our denomination is always quick to help others whenever one of, some people are in need. And so I'm, I'm always pleased to give to this, this offering. So if your heart leads you to do that, we will be collecting this offering the next couple of weeks. And there are some envelopes in your pews if your heart leads you in the, that direction. One of the aspects of this that I'm especially, I especially like to support is the self-development and and they help uh, th this shows a lady with a sewing machine and we help to supply things like that uh, this this offering helps to supply people so that they can help themselves it also uh, helps people who have had to flee their homes uh, you know, a lot of times in in um, other countries people are just constant refugees so it helps them to stay in their location and rebuild and, uh, or go back where they, where they want to live. Um, I just encourage anybody who um, has a heart for this to please remember this offering. Thank you. I'll ask you to please stand again and join me in the call to worship. As we sing our hymns this morning, uh, if you're able to stand, that's great. If you can't stand for the whole time, that's fine. Please don't feel 
um, that you're being different if you need to sit down it's no problem uh, we worship the Lord standing up or sitting down so um, join me this morning oh give thanks to the Lord for he is good his steadfast love endures forever oh, Israel say his steadfast love endures forever open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it. Would everyone please join me in the prayers of the people? Gracious Lord, thank you, precious Father, for your presence here this morning. We ask your blessing on all that happens in your house today. Help us to reflect today on your love for us and the great and great sacrifice that that you've made for us fill us Lord with the desire to discover your genuine love give us the courage each day to risk practicing your love with others be with all who have suffered loss father we continue to lift up to you the Watsons and the Williams families Lord and others in the community father we lift up um, the, those who were hurt in the recent um, accident, the train crew, Father. We just pray that you would be with them and help them to heal quickly, Lord. We are thinking of uh, Judy Meyer this morning, Father, and ask that you'll continue to be with her. Um, be with those who are undergoing medical treatments, such as Judy, and those who are still alone and isolated because of the pandemic. We thank you, Father, for the cross, and we thank you, especially this morning, for these words that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture sermon verse this morning is from 1 Peter 4.10. Like good stewards of the manifold grace of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. And uh, the topic of our, our little talk, and I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, as well as I can, because we have more important things to do. Speaking of service, Tanner, not only is Tanner giving us service in our church, but he is also a veteran. Good. When I uh, was working with freshmen in high school, heaven forbid, I had a good time with them with a little research project called a word search. And what that amounted to is taking a word from a big list that we had and looking up everything you could find with that word. So we started with dictionaries and encyclopedias. And back in those days, kids had to use real books. No computers, no laptops, no telephones, no, you know, all that kind of stuff run it off the internet and say, here's my report. No, it's not your report. It's that guy's report. So anyway, so a lot of places these days don't have some of these books. And of course, the one that's the most important, stay up there, is what most of us who are old enough call a dictionary. Okay? Any more? What, what's this? Hang on, I'll Google it. I'll look it up on such and such, so forth. Well, look up the word service. In here? Yeah. 
And I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to read all this, but I'll show you what I mean. The word service comes from to serve, and that starts right there and goes all the way over to here. I'm not going to read all those either. But serve, to serve is a verb, a transitive verb, for those of you who remember. If you have a transitive verb, the action of the verb moves to something it's transferring to, like serve the meal, serve the community, um, serve the tennis ball, whatever you want to do, okay? And the word service comes from that. Most of the time it's used for, for us as a thing to offer whatever assistance we can do that for. Here's what my kids like to use for the dictionary. You know, and so when you look at the word service, man, oh man, even in here, you have um, to serve, act in the service of, be of use to, well, that's a good one, Pre um, present for consumption as in food or drink, like when you go to a restaurant, uh, undergo as a prison sentence. Um, the act in the service of a person, organization, or cause, etc. So the word service, which is a noun, um, is the activity in behalf of a person, organization, or cause, employment uh, as a domestic worker, military organizations, and that's where we're going, of course. Um, uh, a service can be a favor, We'll talk about that in a second. S a session of public worship, that's where we are. Uh, a set of matched dishes. You know, ladies, you know what that is. How many service things do you have? Well, I have an eight service set of dishes. I've got a 52 service set of dishes. Well, maybe you run a restaurant, I don't know. Anyway, that's just out of this one. So my kids had to look up all that stuff, and then where else do you go to find out about service? Dictionaries, encyclopedias, da 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 da, and of course, a uh, couple of my favorite places in this handbook of Bible applications. We went from service to see this, and all these little blue marks here are. Go to this one and see what it has to say. That's just for us, for 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 faith in God. That's just this one. Then we have another one. Uh, let's see. Um, some of you may have this Zondervan's Picture Bible Dictionary. Some of you might have that one. Same thing. I just put plugged in where service is, and on that page for service, there's a list of almost a three-fourths of a column of the use of the word service or the concept in the Bible. Now, you can imagine some kid getting this, this thing and saying, i got to write a 40-page report on service and whatever you got to do okay and then of course you know these these uh it was it was fun for me to do this and i don't want to take the time to do everything that you do um along with our our verse from first peter um there are some additions there um, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administrating God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength of God, and so on. So, you know, that kind of stuff. There are a couple other ones, too. But you can imagine, those of you who have gone through this wonderful book, how many places have people served other people? You know, from slavery service, which is, which is not something we want to do, to um, voluntary service, from from serving as a uh, as a person with a reference, like a, um, someone who interpreted dreams. You know, those kinds of things. What kind of service do we have today? 
Now think about all the ones we pay for. Speaking of phones, you have uh, electric service, you have uh, natural gas or whatever else you do with your with your furnaces, you have telephone service, you have cable service, you've got internet service, you got some people have lawn services that we gladly pay for. We don't want to do it. Okay. Well, where do we go without the money? Where does that go? Um, helping by choice. We have a few right in our church. Community table. You know, they such a they did such a good job. We're going to give them, we're going to double their salary. <laughs> Last time I looked, well, never mind. Um, all the committees we have in our church, all the uh, like the session, the the trustees, the um, the deacons, and all the people who do things, and uh, gladly. What do you get paid with? Satisfaction that you did something. And we're getting, we're almost there. Um, when you talk about um, services in the church, you know, we have our church services, we have marriages, we have funerals, we have dinners, we have uh, one of the big things is our uh, uh, rummage sales. Especially when you're out on the lawn, that's a blast. You know, somebody's going to buy something. How much is this? And some guy with a big truck goes by. And, <laughs> and that's about it. Anyway, um, we're going to turn over to Kathy and Pat here in just a second. But to serve any way you can, anybody you can, is the whole idea. This guy down here. He gets a little pittance for playing this piano, but oh my goodness, Janet and everybody who's doing all that stuff, and of course, our uh, video guy who sits up there and just giggles at us, you know, and that's kind of stuff. So, anywho, that's, um, that's a reminder of what one word can influence your lives. You know, we have lots of other words. Uh, Pat just referred to some things we need to do with prayers for a lot of people. Um, continue prayers for uh, those who are shut in, those who are on kind of a one-way street with the rest of their earthly lives. And uh, that's a service. You do a favor for somebody, that's a service. And if somebody does a favor for you, thanks, how much do I owe you? Not a thing. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody here. Thank you that we are here to honor four people who gave their service to our country, their families, their town, and they are here to celebrate with us. Keep us going. Uh, from now to next Sunday when we honor your son. And that's the ultimate, ultimate service that he gave to us free of charge so that we can be sitting here. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it's good to be back and join you again today. Um, I'm starting to recognize more faces here. Most of you I see with the quilt wrapped around you now. How much fun is that? I look forward to the time where I can see your faces, too, <laughs> and not just recognize you by your quilt. So, well, we're here on behalf of the Quilts of Valor Foundation, and it's exciting to come back for a, a third round of recognizing um, folks from your membership. I love what Steve shared today about service, and we are indeed going to recognize some very special service. Often when the Legion helps us do a presentation, um, Steve Stonning, the commander, reminds us that when um, one takes the oath, dons the uniform, they basically sign a blank check payable up to and including their life, um, a service that none of us are gonna take, ever take lightly. And so today we're, we're very glad to be able to welcome home four who made that oath, who did their service and are here with us again. Um, Quilts of Valor began in 2003 
there was a lady by the name of Catherine Roberts who had a son deployed in Iraq. And she came up with the idea to do this as a comfort to those when, as they returned home. And since then, here we are in 2021, 269,505 quilts as of, as of February 28th have been presented um, and registered with the foundation. And we're adding to that number today. So a quilt of Valor says thank you in a way that mere words cannot. They've been presented to all five branches in all 50 states, as well as Canada, um, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and our newest chapter is in South Korea. But today we're thinking about the ones that we're gonna present right here at First Presbyterian in Alliance, Nebraska. And so Pat has a little information about our veterans that we're gonna read. She's got some bios about their service, and so we will hear that. Okay. The first bio is for Gene Lineman. Gene is 92, and he was activated as part of the South Dakota National Guard 196th Regimental Combat Team and 147th Field Artillery Battalion on September 1st, 1950, in the early stages of the Korean conflict. The 40th and 45th Divisions National Guard units from Arkansas and Oklahoma reported to Fort Carson the same time as us. Gene spent January and February of 1951 at Fort Sill, Oklahoma as a member of the class of counter mortar radar number three. The military, in their usual good judgment, decided that he wouldn't need his overcoat in balmy Oklahoma in January and February. So they had him leave his overcoat in Colorado. So what happens, it snows and blows the whole week we spent in the field sitting on a folding chair on the plains of Oklahoma behind a converted 584 Air Force radar set facing the snow and blow of Western Oklahoma in a field jacket which caused him to spend the next week in isolation in the base hospital with strep throat. Not long after returning to Fort Carson, several captured Americans in Korea professed to have converted to communism. As a result, a program of information and education was devised, which basically would be a one hour civics class each month for all the troops. An individual from each company or battery would become the discussion leader or I and E N C O. So off to school again, but only for a week this time. In late spring of 1951, it was announced that the 40th and 45th divisions would be sent to Korea, but um, that we had won the lottery or something and would be sent to Alaska instead. The military was curious as to how men and equipment could move over the Alaska highway. As a result, they unloaded 5,000 of us and, and our equipment at Haines, Alaska, and we maneuvered over to the Alcan at Haines Junction. The highway had only been open three years and some of it was quite primitive. For example, there was one long pontoon bridge across the end of a lake in one of the Canadian provinces. When we got to Fort Richardson, the new barracks were not, bar not nearly ready, so we were put in nine-man squad tents. That wasn't bad in September, but we had to stay in them till between Christmas and New Year's when some local units moved in and we got to move into their Quonset huts where I got my first and only experience with an earthquake. So this is Jean's bio. Thank you, Jean. And I think Jean would have a great lot of stories that he would be able to share with us. Um, next, we have Harold Kolrick, U.S. Army. He served in the U.S. Army July 68 through February 71. He had his basic training at Fort Bliss, Texas advanced training at Fort Lee, Virginia, as an auto repair pa uh, pass specialist stationed with the 2nd Infantry Division, 1st uh, Form 72nd Armor Form Maintenance in South Korea. He was discharged as a specialist, 5th Class E5 in February 1971. He met his wife in Korea and got married February 1970. So Roger, would you come up Front and join Jean at the front, please. Roger Yurden. Roger enlisted in the Army in 1971. 
His basic training was in Fort Dix, New Jersey, and engineer equipment, engineer equipment repair training in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. He was sent to Oakland Overseas Replacement Center in California. Orders were changed from Vietnam to Hawaii to the 25th Infantry Division, and that was a great surprise. At Schofield Barracks, he worked on engineer equipment in the radio repair shop, trained in chemical warfare, then set up training stations for it. After 39 months in Hawaii, he was stationed in Fort Stewart, Georgia. He lived in Savannah and worked on Hunter Army Airfield. After Georgia, he was stationed in Hanau, Germany, where he ran a shipping yard. He enjoyed delivering engineer equipment and military vehicles all over Germany. Roger was honorably discharged on December 25, 1979. Roger, would you please join these other gentlemen at front here? And last but not least, we have Mark Kolrick. In May 2001, Mark entered the Army. He completed basic training at, and AIT at Fort Jackson, South Carolina in September 2001. He was assigned to the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment in October of 2001, deployed to Iraq in May of 2003 in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom, and returned home in August of 2004. He received an honorable discharge from active duty in February 2005. After a two-year break in service, he decided to join the Nebraska National Guard in November 2007 and is still serving with the um, 1057 Military Police Company out of Shadron, Nebraska, and he's uh, E7. Um, Mark started his career as a 63 Bravo wheeled vehicle mechanic. He spent his deployment as a 19 Delta Cav Scout performing quick reaction force duties. He came home to continue his career as a mechanic in the National Guard and is now the motor sergeant for the 1057th MP Company. He became the motor sergeant in 2017 for the 623rd Engineering Company in Wahoo, Nebraska. Uh, Mark is also, SFC Colrick is also part of the National Honor Guard team performing funeral honors for veterans this, state, this side of the state. SFC Colrick's duties also include the unit's master fitness trainer, master resilience trainer, and hazmat response team member. Recently, he participated in Operation Protect Democracy for the January presidential inauguration in Washington, D.C. Mark's accomplishments are basic training and advanced individual training, 2001, warrior leadership course in 2010, advanced leadership course, 2013, Senior Leadership Course 2016, Wheeled Vehicle Recovery Course 2010, Master Resiliency Trainer Course 2015, Master Fitness Trainer Course 2017. Mark, would you please join your family here in the front? Can we give all these gentlemen a hand as Mark has come here? And would the gentleman that I asked to help wrap uh, this morning come forward, please? All right, fellas, <clears throat> we want to thank you. We thank you for leaving your home and your family, all the things that you hold dear, being willing to stand in harm's way. So to Jean, Harold, Roger, and Mark, we know that freedom isn't free. And because of you and men and women like you, we have the freedoms that we enjoy today, and we do not take that lightly. So this, these quilts are thank you from your friends and your family and a grateful nation. So are you ready to see them? All right, I'll have you guys really have here. Each of you just take one for the moment. Open up jeans, which Steve has. So Steve, we're gonna have to get you in the front row for a minute, because nobody can, can see can it. Or you can come up here, here guys. We're gonna have to do something. <laughs> all right. And I need to tell you that Margaret made all of these. She made them all and bound them all. Um, I 
these two then um, block, block her quilt to this one. And so I'm going to have you guys do a little spin. So I know Jean's had a peek at it because her sister was at her house. Jean is, Jean is Margaret's husband. Harold is Margaret's brother. Roger is Margaret's brother-in-law. And Mark is Margaret's nephew. All right, so while you guys have that quilt open, in the front to the people, there you go. Um, we think of them this way, that, that top, it's a quilt, not a blanket, first of all, I'm sure you know that. And that top with all of its different pieces and colors reminds us of the different individuals and communities that are grateful, so grateful for your service. And then the inside of the quilt, the batting is the middle layer, the layer you can't see. That's the warmth, the comfort, and that's the part that we hope is comforting and healing every time that our veterans use them. And then the back of the quilt is, represents the, the support of the, it supports the quilt, it represents the support and the strength of our veteran and of our communities. And it's held together by a whole bunch of stitches. And we have the stitches that hold those three layers together, that hold the parts on the top together, the stitches that hold the binding together. So a lot of stitches on every quilt. And those remind us uh, and represent the thoughts, the prayers, um, sometimes even the tears of the makers as they put these together. And then we have the labels. So each one will have a label. Like I said, they'll all say that Margaret pieced them and bound them. And this one was, was um, quilted by Suzanne. It has their names, their date and location. While the labels may not be identical, they all clearly stated as a quilt of valor. And um, that's what makes it a quilt of valor. So I'll let you guys go and wrap Jean with his. And we'll just open the next one and see whose name's on it. <laughs> I don't know who's or who's from the hold it up, so we'll just open one. I mean, I'll hold yours a minute. I think that's Mark. Is that right, Margaret? Here's the eagle. All right, this is Mark. Um, a special note is that Margaret ended up hand quilting this one. So every stitch on this quilt, start to finish, even those that uh, were on and off again and back on again, because I know this one gave Margaret a lot of steam over time. <laughs> those stars were tricky. Um, it was all made with, with love, though, for sure. And so that is Mark. So fellows, we want you to use your quilts. And every time you use them, we want you to know and feel the love and the appreciation that was sewn into every seam. Because I know that lady and I know that's exactly what's inside each one of these quilts. That they were made from start to finish. She knew who each one was gonna be before she even picked out the fabric. That these were definitely made from love, with love from start to finish. When I get home, I will register these with the foundation. We'll keep bumping that number up as they 
record theirs. But in closing, on behalf of the Quilts of Valor Foundation, the Panhandle Blocks Quilt Group, the American Leisure Writers Panhandle Chapter 43, your friends and neighbors and brothers and sisters here at First Presbyterian Church, we thank you so much for your service. As together we say, welcome home. Dear Lord, thank you for this great day, and thank you for these veterans. We have many veterans in our con congregation, and we have some who are still on active duty, like Mark. Keep them safe, keep us safe as we go out and celebrate this week in preparation for next Sunday, which is also going to be a very special day. Watch out for everybody traveling from here back to the homes and uh, be with us no matter what we do and no matter what kind of service we offer to others and be thankful that we are receiving service from others in your name we pray amen <laughs>